Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wavy Dynamics Insights. Today I want to take some time to make a video about underbody diffusers. So diffusers are an aerodynamic device. I'm sure many of you have heard of them before. They've been around for decades. They're quite visually distinctive, so a clear feature on any race car. And what they're in place to do is ultimately generate downforce. Certain platforms just feature a rear diffuser, others feature a front diffuser as well. They're a much more efficient device than wings which means they generate a lot of downforce for a relatively lower amount of drag. And essentially, they're just an implementation of a Venturi tunnel, where you have an inlet, followed by the underbody of the floor, followed by a divergent section, which is the actual diffuser. And the main function of the diffuser in our case is essentially to extract air through the throat of the Venturi tunnel, i.e. the underside of the car, as rapidly as possible. And in that process, a low pressure is generated and the car is effectively sucked down to the floor. I find a common misconception about diffusers is that the low pressure is generated in the actual divergent section, but that's not the case. The lowest pressure in a diffuser is actually at the leading edge, just where the radius starts to go into the divergent section. But the goal of the diffuser is to lower the pressure on the upstream flat underside of the car. Essentially, in diffuser design and diffuser performance, there are several key factors that need to be optimized. So not so long ago, I actually did a CFD study on diffusers. I have some information which I can share, which will help me demonstrate the point. The output of that little study was two articles which are posted on the website. So I've got a two part series on uh, understanding diffusers and a link to those will be in the description. The first thing to note is that in any diffuser, the low pressure generated on the underside of the car will then pull in air from the surrounding stream of air around the car. And what that does is produce two vortices at the shoulder of the diffuser, which roll in, and at first it might seem like they're a source of inefficiency, but actually they're very good at keeping flow attached to them. So what these vortices actually do is draw in undisturbed air from close to the ground and fling it up towards the surfaces of the diffuser, and that maintains flow attachment. So as a result of less separation, the diffuser can be a more powerful extractor and a lower pressure can be generated upstream. It's important then to make sure that these vortices are forming as strongly as they can and they're going into the right places. The other important factor in diffuser design is the inclination angle. So how steeply or how steep is the gradient from the flat underbody into the divergent section. The steeper it is, the more separation you get. There's obviously a balance between having it um, steep enough that the extraction is maximized and overstepping that to the point where the extraction starts to fall off. So getting that right is important. Uh, typically in motorsport applications, you could see angles of up to 20%. And that is also linked to the expansion rate. So the ratio of areas from the inlet of the diffuser to the outlet of the diffuser is important. That's obviously related to the length of the divergent section. This defines the expansion rate or the expansion ratio. If you try and overexpand the air, you get separation. The other thing which is quite interesting and perhaps logical is the radius of the leading edge of the diffuser section. Where the flat underbody merges into the divergent section of the diffuser, um, there can be a radius. The type of radius and the size of that radius is very important for determining separation. So having it at a very sharp angle is no good. You need to gently curve that in. That's very important for performance. The last important factor I want to talk about today is the ride height. So obviously with a lower car or a higher car, you're effectively changing the expansion ratio or the ratio of areas between the inlet and the outlet. So that's something to be very careful of. Um, cars that are too low, you reduce the mass flow through the diffuser and effectively choke it, which means there's a lot of separation and not much downforce generated. Ride height also influences the strength and the formation of the vortices. So some of you will be aware that cars with a lot of underbody downforce generation are very sensitive to sensitive to ride height. That's one of the reasons why. And that about covers it. Otherwise, this video is going to turn into a 20 minute, um, which is not what I planned. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that gives you a little insight into diffusers and how they work, why they work, the important factors. I'll be back as soon as I can with another uh, insights video about a different topic. But I hope you enjoyed it. Stay close and be inspired.